Um, I got a, a, two emails, two emails yesterday that spoke about the same thing. Um, one came from Rob. How do you get out of the habit of believing your thoughts? Good question, Rob. How do you get out of the habit of believing your thoughts? The second one came from Denise. There's a relationship that has perpetuated negative thoughts. I'm now aware of these thoughts, and I know that my mind is usually getting in the way to the extent of negativity. At the same time, I know these negative thoughts are somewhat based on past experiences with a specific person. Okay. So it's really, we have to really get, under, get underneath this concept of thought. So how do you get past negative thought? So a negative thought, let's say, will come in based on either a past experience, the exaggeration of a past experience, the ability to stipulate or speculate on someone else's past experience. Somehow you have connected an experience or a future experience with some level of negativity. Okay, so you get up to give a presentation in fourth grade, it doesn't go well, and you say, I'm never going to do this again. And then every time you get up to give another presentation, your brain goes, we're not doing this again, right? So fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth, right? So think about all the neuroplasticity that gets developed. As you get to that presentation, you, you've got a rock solid path that says, don't, we're, we're bad at it, we're not going to do it, we won't get it, right? And then at this point, it gets, it's all subconscious. We're, we're going to get rejected and you get all the social rejection. There's all this stuff. I'm never speaking again, okay? And you're stuck. Because every time you go down this road, because in fourth grade, you had a bad presentation. Now, over the course of time, you've developed a path. It's almost an automatic path towards, no, can't do it, can't do it. I'm not good at it. It's not what I do. It's not what I do. It's not what I do. I'm never going to speak. I'm never going to speak. I can't do it. And off we go. Right? This person always hurts me. If they hurt you, we got to talk about that. But let's assume every time I do this, this is what happens. They're a bad person. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Right? Go down this road and off we go. I love to try things. Every time, time, time I try things, I fail, right? I'm not good at this. I'm already this age. Age is a huge neuroplastic trap, right? I'm this age. And so it's already too late for me. You ever hear that? It's too late for me. I love that. If you look through the Bible, you will see that like people have done things mostly at the, in, in their, in their, what we call not their later years, their middle years. Abraham, Jacob, I mean, look at these people, Moses, these people were all way past the middle of their lives before they started. But in our, in our culture, like if you're like 21 and you don't have your life figured out, like maybe my kids, it's, it's a total, it's a total nonsense. You could be 90 years old and have 30 good years that can change the world. Please, this whole like I'm too old stuff is all made up. But we have it, right? Negative thoughts. The reason why we have them, remember, and when you have a negative and a positive, remember the negative is always going to stick out because negative keeps you safe and healthy. Positive doesn't, right? So if I am scared, I'm going to fail. Survival. Survival means be safe, be comfortable. Social acceptance is part of survival. So if I get up there and I have like, 10 positives, you did a great job, and one negative, no, you didn't. I'm going to incline towards the negative from driving down the street. And there's a hundred good drivers and one bad driver, I'm going to incline towards the negative. That's how my brain keeps me alive. I focus on danger. I focus on negative. So we are, if it's two things in front of us, good and bad, we're going to always focus on the bad. Negative thoughts. She always, he always, how do you get through it? So let's just talk about one, I will say easy, but one important exercise. Any time that there's anything positive related to either you or somebody like you, you have to stop and reinforce that idea in your mind. For example, I'm never going to be able to, let's do, present in public. You get up, someone says to you afterwards, that was really great. Someone says, don't quit your day job. You get back in your car and you have to now do the following. Listen to this. You have to force yourself, 
force yourself to remind yourself of the positive and allow your brain to live in the positive comment because it won't naturally. And if the more you live in that comment, the more your brain creates a connection that allows that road to have now two roads. And it won't happen naturally if you don't force it. Your brain's gonna go, oh my God, think of the negative, think of the negative, think of the negative. You have to stop what you're doing. You have to pull from your willpower and you have to think about the positive because if you don't think the positive, your brain won't go there naturally. If you remember weeks ago, we spoke about a friend of mine who had a family issue, do you remember? And he went in to see his family member. I think this was like episode like five. Later on, what he would do to enable himself to have the strength was his brain said, you can't go talk to that person. And he would have to sit beforehand and tell himself, I did it already once. It wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. I could do this. I could do this. By reviewing in his head, you're going to hit this wall called I can't. It's not true. I, it's not true. If you could almost picture the map, the brain will come down to a situation and then there'll be an I can't barrier. No, you can't. Either we know you failed or look at that person who failed or look at the video you showed once someone who failed or let's extrapolate that your grandparents failed and here we go again. The way you get out of it is your brain has to when it passes or when someone else passes or when someone like you passes or when you can put the pieces together that's logically okay, you have to review it enough times till you've given your brain another path. So when you get to the I can't, you're not saying... Uh, this is wrong, you're saying, don't take this so seriously. The way you stop dealing with negativity is you need to create another path of positivity. You can't get rid of the negative. The negative is there. You can't go into your brain and delete the code. What you have to do is create another path so that as you get to that path again, you now have two options. I get stopped here. Why me? And I can't believe it. And how come I ended up like this? And how come my life went like this? And that's not going to go away for a long time. You have to create another way that you can get around it. And you do that by reminding yourself of it, by visualizing that this should be okay, by extrapolating from other people that have done it too, by taking a, a, a previous experience where you were okay and highlighting it and living in it. Living in the experience for a few minutes. I did that and it was fine. I did it and it was totally okay. It wasn't so scary. I got through it. I got through it. I do this sometimes when I travel. I'm an emotional guy. I, mean, I am. I'm an emotional guy. I still can't get on an airplane and travel and like leave the family. I have such a hard time with it. I can't even tell you. Especially when I go to, go away for like a week or two, or you know, I don't go for that much for longer than that. But you know, what times I'm sitting on that, I'm uh, I'm leaving the house that before and I'm packing and my stomach is going crazy. And I travel, thank God, a lot. I don't know now, who knows? But I used to travel a lot. How many times I'm sitting in the house going, "You've been here before." It's going to be fine. Don't cancel the trip. It's hard in the transition. Separation is hard for everybody. You can't connect the separation moment with the whole trip. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And the more I drag, and then when I'm on this side of it, and I'm off the airplane, and I'm doing what I'm doing, and it's fine. I'm, I'm okay. I can live without my family for a day, for two days. Thank God. And I find myself there and things are moving and I'm good. I'm like, you stop and remember this feeling. You're going to feel the separation anxiety. Don't, that's not real. And keep on doing it and keep on doing it. And then as you get to that, ah, I don't know, you, oh, wait a second. I know I feel this way, but there's a path here. I've, I've, I've been here before. The way you stop li listening to your own negative thoughts is you have to make them logical. You have to bring back some logic, but you have to create another route. 
and you create another root by exaggerating the good. And I don't mean like by making it false. I mean, because it will not in your mind be as memorable as the negative. And when you exaggerate, not I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. You exaggerate, I can, I could do this. He did it, I can't do it. She's doing it, I can't do it. I did it last time, that was fine. If you, if you don't exaggerate it on purpose, if you don't turn the dial up in your mind, it won't turn up. But by turning up the dial, as you get to that thing you'll find is that there'll be another path available to you. And you'll walk that path gingerly and you go, oh, that's not so bad. And you'll turn it up again. And you'll keep until now when you get there, there's another path you go on. And the way it works in your brain is called synaptic pruning. You can't get rid of this. You can't code this out. What you do is you stop taking this road and it starts to dissolve on its own. And this gets stronger. That's, by the way, the trick to everything. You can never go up against negativity. You can't, because every time you go up against negativity, you're just reinforcing negativity. All you need to do is you need to create a positive route. Okay, we'll continue this tomorrow. Hope everyone's having a great day. Happy Sunday. And, um, and thanks so much for tuning in. With God's help, I can't wait to see you again tomorrow.